AP Physics 1, we're going to do uh, student workbook question 3M, gravitational fields. And the scenario says as follows. The mass of Mars is one-tenth times that of the Earth. Uh, the diameter of Mars is one-half that of Earth. And for part A, for the quantitative analysis, it says to derive the equation for the gravitational G due to a planet. Uh, I think that means gravitational acceleration. So that could apply to any planet whatsoever. And keep in mind, whenever they say the word derive in AP Physics 1, it's wanting you to take something that is from the formula sheet, and we're going to take that object from the formula sheet, or that formula from the formula sheet, and we're going to turn it into something that we can use uh, for our benefit. And uh, let's see, if you look through the formula sheet, uh, we're going to find the equation of universal gravitation, which is the equation that we probably want to use. So if you're, uh, let's think about this. So from the equation sheet, we're going to have F equals big G times the mass of the two objects. I'm going to do M1, M2 divided by the distance squared. You know what? I'm going to change this. Let's go ahead and do like little m and big M. Little m being the mass of the little object that's in there and big M being the mass of the planet or, uh, you know, little mass, big mass if you're dealing with like the sun and the earth or something like that. But we'll, we'll do little m and big M for, for these two. And, well, if you're looking for the uh, gravity due to a planet, so you're looking for the surface gravity. So if there was a person just standing there, you would be looking for the effect of the acceleration due to gravity, which would cause, uh, if you were to calculate that force from acceleration due to gravity, it would essentially be calculating their weight. So how would we write out what their weight is according to this GMM over D squared? Well, their weight is just little mg, little m being the mass of the person and g being the surface gravity. It doesn't have to be a person. It could be any object that's on the surface of that planet. So what we can do is we can then substitute. We can take this f and we can turn it into mg, little mg. And that's what we're going to do in this case. So I'm going to say that little m times acceleration due to gravity is equivalent to big G, the universal gravitational constant, times the little mass times the big mass divided by uh, the distance squared. And whenever we look at it, we'll see that there is some cancellation that occurs. You know, there's a little m here, and this little m cancels out. So we could scratch both of those and then write down our simplified response and notice that g is already by itself so if we're trying to find the equation for a uh, gravitational acceleration due to a planet then it's this right here g is going to be equal to uh, the gravitational constant big g times the mass of the planet divided by the distance squared this is what we're probably going to end up using and if you think about it, that does kind of make sense because little masses don't really matter. Uh, acceleration due to gravity is the same no matter what, where you are on the actual surface of the planet. As long as the elevation doesn't increase or decrease, that acceleration is going to be the exact same thing. Uh, and we know that it's related to the distance squared because the force of gravity gets weaker squared as you get further away from an object. Let's take a look at the second one. For part B, it says, uh, let G be the gravitational field strength on the Earth's surface. Derive an expression, oh, here, here we are deriving again, for the gravitational field on the surface of Mars without plugging in a value for the mass or the radius of Mars. So the only thing we really know about this is that the mass of Mars is one-tenth that of the Earth, and we also know that the diameter is one half that of Earth, which means that the radius would also be one half as well. It says your answer should be multiplied by little g uh, for each line of the derivation. Explain what was done mathematically, i.e., annotate your derivation. Okay, so we're going to just take this and uh, go through each individual spot. So the first thing that we need to do is start off with what we had before for the gravitational acceleration on uh, you know, Earth as a reference point. So we know that if we can find the gravitational acceleration using that equation that we just derived above, we could say that uh, the gravitational field or the gravitational acceleration of Earth 
is going to be equal to, and I may spread this out a little bit, uh, big G times, so I'm going to do big G times the mass of the Earth. I'll go ahead and just spell out Earth there. Divided by uh, the distance squared, and that distance is going to be the distance from the center of mass to the Earth to the value out squared. So I'm going to put D Earth squared. Okay, and what would we want to annotate here? Uh, we would say that, you know, this is the value uh, for the Earth. So, and, and since we're using G as a reference, we would say, uh, you know, this is the equation. For Earth, go ahead and capitalize that, I think. Equation for Earth as a comparison to Mars. Because uh, we know that it's going to follow the same formula, uh, and we know that the mass of the Earth would work, and we all know that the diameter or the radius of the Earth would also work as well, too. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some values, and we're going to put those values inside. Uh, we can substitute this in and come up with a little bit of a, of a different story. So for the next part, let's go ahead and say, well, okay, what if we're not dealing with the gravitational acceleration of the Earth? What if we're dealing with the gravitational acceleration of... Mars. So for that part, let's go ahead and put, you know, G Mars. And we need to ask ourselves, if you're using the gravitational acceleration of Mars, what is going to change? Well, big G is the same no matter what. It's not going to change. And we know that the mass of Mars is a lot different. Back in the top of the passage, it says that it's only 10% that of the mass of the Earth. So instead for Mars, we'll put one-tenth the mass of the Earth, and I'll just put Me for mass of the Earth this time. I'm getting kind of lazy. I don't want to write out Earth every single time. Uh, and then down on the bottom, we know that the radius or the di or the the distance. I put the I use D for distance. Uh, so you might want to use R for radius, and e either way is fine. Uh, so we know that that value is going to be half of the distance from the center of mass to the surface of the planet. So that's going to be half the distance of the Earth. So that's one half. The distance of the Earth, I'll just put DE squared. Okay, so what did we do in this case? What did we change? Uh, we switched out, you know, we changed uh, the uh, reference. So instead of referencing Earth, we referenced Mars. So we changed the reference from Earth to Mars. And we had to put in our numbers that went along with it. Okay, so now what we need to do is, I think we just need to do like a little bit of simplification. So we can simplify this out and we can say, okay, well, um, we can just take these numbers and pull them out. So I'm going to say that G Mars, little g, doesn't really change. I'm going to just leave that the same. Uh, but this is one-tenth, and I can go ahead and just pull this out. 1 over 10. This G can be like on the top, so let's go ahead and put it up there. M, E. And then on the bottom, let's go ahead and pull this fraction out. Now this is 1 half squared, so that's going to become 1 half times 1 half, which is really 1 fourth. And then that's going to be D, E squared. Okay, so now we have two fractions that we have to deal with. And what did we do here? We just moved some numbers around, and we made it easier for us to see. So I think we're going to call that, you know, simplifying. So we'll just write out here, simplify. Okay, now we can also do some more simplification, because I see a fraction on top of a fraction, and that normally bothers people tremendously. Keep in mind that if you've got a fraction on top and a fraction on bottom, what you want to do is you want to flip the bottom one and multiply. So 1 divided by 10 divided by 1 fourth is really the same thing as keeping, like flipping the 1 fourth on bottom and multiplying it. So it'll come out to be 4 over 10. So that's going to be G... Uh, of Mars, and we'll go ahead and just flip that. So this is really multiplying by 4, so that's going to be 4 tenths. So I'm going to put up here 4 tenths G M E 
over. None of the rest of this changed, so it's still DE squared. Okay, and what did we do in that case? We just took the two fractions and we simplified them. So I'm going to go ahead and put simplify on that one too. Okay, now the last thing that we need to do is relate this to uh, the gravity on Mars versus the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So this GME over DE squared, that's the exact same thing that we have up here at the top. So if I look at G Earth, that G Earth is going to be G times mass of the Earth divided by the uh, distance or the radius of the Earth squared. So that's the exact same thing that I have down here in this box. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to simplify it down to relate it to the reference point of the Earth. So I'm going to say that G Mars is going to be equal to four tenths times the acceleration due to gravity of the Earth. And there we have it. Okay, so uh, what do we need to put there? Uh, let's see here. Uh, we substituted. I can't spell. Substituted. Uh, to relate the uh, G of Mars to G of Earth. And what we found is we found that it was going to end up being about four-tenths or 40% that of the acceleration due to gravity of Earth. So the gravity on Mars is much, much less than the gravity on Earth, which makes sense if we think about it. If you remember back in the original passage, it said that it was going to be half of the value or half of the uh, radius, which means that as you go down further, that's going to increase gravity. But, it, it, you know, it's squared, so that would give you a factor of four but it was one-tenth the mass. So since it was a much, much smaller mass, it makes sense that the acceleration due to gravity is going to be much, much less, even with the smaller radius that was applied to it. So this is a reasonable answer, and the derivation seems to hold up fairly well. Uh, the units came out the same on both sides. You got gravity and gravity, or acceleration due to gravity, so it should come out, you know, meters per second squared on the left side and meters per second squared on the right side. So, I don't know, I seem satisfied with this. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, argumentation part C. A rock has dropped 2.0 meters from the surface of Mars. Does this rock take longer or a shorter time to fall than a rock that was dropped 2 meters above the surface of the Earth? Justify your answer without using equations. So that means that in this equation, you do not want to include anything dealing with GMM over R squared because even though it can be proven that way, that's not what they're wanting you to do. They're wanting you to uh, explain this using words. So uh, the way that I would try to explain this using words is there are two factors that are going to make a difference here. Uh, and, and just like always, I'm not going to actually write this out because I think it's really important for uh, everyone who's working on this to do it in their own words and to justify their own answer um, without doing this. Because you, you don't, if you just copy down what's what, what I would write, you don't really learn anything. But I will give you a couple of things to think about. So if you're dealing with this on whether or not it's going to take a longer or a shorter amount of time, there are two things that are going to matter here. Uh, the mass of the planet matters. So that's something to take into consideration. The mass of the planet matters. Okay. Uh, so a, a smaller mass uh, will end up giving you less acceleration. A larger mass of a planet will end up getting you a greater acceleration when considered in conjunction with the radius of the planet as well too, or the distance from the center of mass of that planet to the surface. Okay, uh, so the other thing to consider is that the radius of the planet does matter. And then if you look at both of them in conjunction, you should be able to find out whether or not this uh, object will speed up or slow down. So think about it for a couple of seconds and then try to determine whether or not you think that this will, uh, does the rock on Mars take a longer or a shorter amount of time to fall? If this was an open response question and we had derived our formula correctly, we could use it as a comparison to see that the gravity on Mars is less than that on Earth, so that means that it's going to accelerate slower. So if it accelerates slower, it's going to take a longer amount of time in order to be able to fall. 
uh, you could also justify it using that uh, acceleration due to gravity. Uh, that would also work too. So you could explain it using the force, or you could also explain it using the acceleration due to gravity. Both of those are, are legitimate justifications without using an equation. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, part D, oh, on the internet, I love these. Uh, on the internet, a student finds the following equation for the time an object will take to fall to the ground from a height h, depending on the mass and radius of the planet the object is on, and they found out that t was equal to the square root of 2 times h times big G divided by the big mass, the mass of the planet, times r squared. r would be the distance from the center of mass to the surface of the object. So uh, regardless of whether this equation is correct, so they don't even want us to, to think about whether it's correct or not, does it agree with your qualitative reasoning in part C? So does will it show that an object will take uh, a longer amount of time to fall on Mars? Uh, in other words, does this equation for T have the expected dependence as reasoned in part C? So here's a couple of things that we need to look for. When you look at this equation and find out whether or not it's dependent, uh, remember, there were two things that actually mattered here. Um, let's see here, because we're looking for the time. Uh, and from part C, we had two different things that made a difference, like the mass of the planet made a difference, okay, and the uh, radius made a difference as well. So the mass of the planet made a difference, and then the radius of the planet made the difference too, the distance from one spot to another. Okay, um, so let's see here. Um, what you want to do with this is relate these as if you were dealing with the planets in comparison to each other. So the Earth is a larger radius and a larger mass. So I'm just going to put like E for this guy. And then the Mars would be, um, I'm just going to write out Mars because I don't want you all to accidentally think that's big M. So the Earth is much, much larger. The planet Mars has a smaller radius and a smaller mass to it as well too. So if we look at the mass and we look at the radius in comparison, uh, and we were to try to plug in numbers, if you divide by a smaller number, then the time, the answer to this fraction will increase. So it would, uh, it, the, the dependence seems to be the same. So like if you have a smaller, any, either one of those smaller numbers, uh, either in the radius or the mass, would have the same dependence. So the answer to this one is yes, that it would. Now, there's a lot of people that whenever I say that, yes, it would, they would be like, wait, 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 wait. Hang on just a second here. Uh, it, you know, in, in the formula, it says that the mass is on the top. And, and the problem is, is you don't actually need to think about the actual correct equation for the, the force of gravity between two planets. Because if you think about that, that's uh, G M M over R squared. And in this case, the M is actually on the bottom. And a lot of people see that and they're like, oh, so it's just automatically wrong. They don't want you to actually think about that. They're, they're basically saying this person just found some random equation on the internet and they're looking to see if it has the same dependence. So in other words, if the values go down, does the time actually increase? And, and the answer to that one is yes. Okay, so, um, and then it says, briefly explain your reasoning without deriving an equation for T. So in your own words, what you need to try to say with this in order to talk about deriving, uh, without deriving an equation for T, is talk about how if you made M a smaller number, that you would be dividing by a smaller number and therefore would come out with a larger time. Same thing with the radius. If you decrease the radius, that the radius would decrease and it would give you a larger time. So both of these things on the bottom would be fractions and they would actually work out. Um, the top part is you were uh, making it fall to the ground from a height h. That h was a constant value uh, and the universal gravitational constant was also a constant value and the number two is a constant value. It's not going to change any at all. So the things that we were comparing were the mass M and the radius R. So that's what you would need to put for the bottom part. And try your very best to explain it in your own words. I think that's very, very important for you to be able to do. So I'm not going to actually write anything there. Uh, my considerations would be to look at the equation, specifically look at the M and look at the R squared. Okay, and then uh, on the last one,
It says, I think this is the last one anyway, uh, another student deriving an equation for the time it takes for an object to fall from a height h makes a mistake and comes up with t is equal to the square root of r squared divided by 2 times g times the big mass times h without deriving the correct equation. So they don't want you to fix it. Okay, they don't want you to fix this equation. They just want you to look at this and say, how can you tell that this equation is not plausible? Uh, in other words, that it doesn't make physical sense. And you can briefly explain your reasoning. There's two ways to do this. Although the um, AP exam normally uh, wants you to try to look at it from a quantitative standpoint. In other words, they want you to try to look at the numbers and relate the numbers to the variables in play here. Uh, another way to think about it is to look at the units on both sides and say, okay, well, time is measured in seconds. So on the right side is the square root of two times the distance, or is the square root of the radius squared divided by the gravitational constant times the mass times another distance. Will that come out with, with seconds? And upon brief inspection, I don't really see any time on the right side of the equation. So by units alone, this doesn't really look like it's going to work out. Uh, and you can do that using a kind of like a dimensional analysis method where you write out the units for, for everything. And, and that would work. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but the big thing that we're looking for is you're looking for things that if you were to try to change the numbers around, um, if things would go weird. And what we really know is that if, in, no matter what, it doesn't really matter what planet that you're on, if you take an object and you drop it, dropping it from a shorter distance versus dropping it from a longer distance, no matter what, will cause this to increase the amount of time. So if you drop it from half the distance, it will take less time than if you dropped it from, you know, twice the distance of the, of the short version. So that makes physical sense. However, when we look over here and we see that there is an H down here in the bottom, that's weird. And this is what I would actually use for this part of the equation is I would say that if you make the height a larger number, which would increase the amount of height, that should make the time go up. But since height is on the bottom of a fraction, if you're increasing the height, that means that the time is going to get smaller because of that. And that makes no physical sense. Okay, um, And that's really what they're looking for is that H in the equation right here. Okay, we can look at the other ones too, like the radius squared and the mass. The r squared up top actually does make sense because if you increase the distance away from it, increasing the distance away from the object will cause a larger fall time. Okay, uh, and then on the bottom, if you increase the mass of the object, uh, that will cause a smaller uh, fall time because you're dividing by a big number, so that makes the time smaller. That makes sense because if you increase the mass on a planet, then uh, it's going to relate to a greater acceleration, a greater pull. So the thing that doesn't really make sense in this equation is that little h in there. So uh, what you need to do on this section is, in your own words, describe how that little h, whenever you make it a larger number, uh, it becomes a smaller time, which is not what you would want to expect. All right, I hope this was informative to you guys, and have a great day.